tracks play. Let's do this. Hello, I'm Bruce Harris. Ya Rana, I'm Hina Reed. Hi, I'm Miguel Mora, and welcome to Check's Play. Mm -hmm. to play. No breeze, no breeze, no breeze. <laughs> Watch out. I'm blending in because I have a virtual background. You know, guys, welcome to Check's Play podcast, by the way. I'm in New Jersey, not in Punta Cana. Now, wow. how you like that? Huh? I'm in Las Vegas. I'm, I'm still remaining in Punta Cana. Somebody had to stay there. <laughs> Your remains are Somebody in Punta Somebody has Cana? to work. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'm working too. So, hey, listen, before we go any further, just make sure we tell everybody, everybody, please subscribe. Please subscribe. Because we've, we're finding out that so many people are missing some really important guests that have been on um, on the of the podcast for Checks Play. So please subscribe. It's not because we're monetized. It's not anything like that. It's because of the fact that you're monetized by getting some important mm -hmm. information out there. And so we're glad to have you. And as the term checks play, where checks play comes from, uh, Hina, do you know what checks play really means? I do not. Why don't you tell myself and the entire audience? No, I'm going to let Miguel explain it. Miguel? Well, checks play is a term that we use in the gaming business uh, when there is money in action. Uh, you know, like let's say you're, for instance, at a $25 table, the dealer is dealing and all of a sudden the guy comes in a $500 bet. So the dealer will yell out checks play or checks in action. And the supervisor then knows that there is a big bet going on there so he can go and take a look at it or notify the pit boss if it needs be. That's absolutely, what the term is. So. Absolutely. So we have some exciting guests and there was a big action. So text play, we want people to know. So subscribe, yes. hit, hit the subscribe button. So, absolutely. I yeah. say, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Hey, so let's get right into it. We have some um, some great hot topics really quick. Did you guys know that uh, Sands China in Macau has been experiencing some critical, critical lows? Uh, and pretty much, uh, as you guys know, that Macau was shut down for quite some time. So Sands is, uh, they had a billion dollar loan from the parent company and reported a loss of $760 million from the first half of the year. During the pandemic, uh, the closure of the casinos, uh, the revenues went down to about 80%. And aside from that also compounding the situation is the restrictions from the Chinese government for the travel into Macau. Mm. Uh, so all those restrictions and the pandemic, they recently had to close down again because of the of the resurgence of the pandemic and all those things are no good for them. So uh, it has hurt them tremendously. Wow. That's I can't crazy. even imagine. I can't even imagine. That is a lot of money. It's a lot. And on the other side, to Bergada, Hard Rock, as well as the, uh, let's see, it was uh, the Borgata, Hard Rock, and Oceans in Atlantic City are dominating the nine casinos in Atlantic City. Uh, they have upstreams in the market there, I think about, about eight or nine percent over mm -hmm. the previous, over previous year, pre-COVID. Did they, yeah. did they give reasons why? Uh, it, it's the summer season right now, that, that's uh -huh. one of them. Uh, they're, they're right in the smack of the of the season. Uh, they had a great July. Borgata came in about seventy six point uh, five million dollars for the month. Uh, Hard Rock was fifty two point eight million, and uh, the Ocean came in at over forty million. Also, wow. So those three properties are are kicking the market in, in AC. The other four properties, uh, they're like a little bit stagnant. Uh, they're those those three properties are uh, the main places in Atlantic City where to play, and they they put a lot marketing dollars uh, for player development. So they attract the players. Uh, they 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 got great offers, and that translates into uh, money at the tables yeah. and slots. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, so we look at that very closely. You know, that's where we got to start, right, Miguel? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I always read the numbers. Uh, the numbers in Atlantic City are public, are of public domain. So every month, the Casino Control Commission, uh, they they put out the numbers. They put out the numbers. You can go on their website, and the the numbers are right there. Yeah. So you can anybody can see them. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, I had the opportunity to open up uh, Hard Rock in Atlantic City. And I'm telling you, when we opened, they came. I mean, it just, it was in droves. Everyone just, you know, because we were just right off the boardwalk too. So, yeah. but it was, I mean, but it was an amazing, it, it was amazing opening and so many people and they did it right before the 4th of July. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Hey, speaking of Atlantic City Hard Rock, hey, shout out to my man. Um, I, uh, he's a great, great leader, Joe Lupo. The president yes. of Hard Rock is transitioning. He's going to be heading out to Las Vegas, where he came from, actually, before he got to the Borgata, going to um, head up the transition of the Mirage Hotel you Hard Rock Casino. From the Strip. Uh, we wish Joe the very best. Uh, Joe's a great guy, uh, a lot of knowledge. So we are sure, I'm, I'm positive that Joe is going to do a great job, like he's done in Tampa and he's done in Atlantic City. Uh, so... It's going to be a great property to see. I can't wait to see it. Uh, Bruce and I were planning to probably go to the G2E. We'll be there. We're, we're going to come and see yeah. the property. Absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. I can't wait to I can't wait to see him because I think the last time I saw him was when we did open up. Mm -hmm. right. Really? So, yeah. So Joe taught me. He taught me before I left to go from T Tampa to Punta Cana. He said, Bruce, let's have lunch. And uh, yeah, it was just kicking around a little bit. And of course, the, I was, you know, he was really wanted me to um come and, and give me some flowers before i left give me some gems to help help me out because it's not like he, joe and i we didn't not even work directly for him but he was nice enough to uh recognize that i was going to punta cana and that he wanted to make sure i was going to be successful and that's what leaders do and mm. uh so he said let's sit down and have some lunch and there's one thing a phrase that he taught me that i will never forget he said i said joe how should i how should i approach this position it was a new position for me he said, Bruce, just make sure you take a step at a time, breathe, and just tackle the low-hanging fruit. And he kept talking. And I said, what are you talking about, <laughs> low-hanging fruit? So, excuse me, Joe, if you don't mind, can you go back and rewind? What is low-hanging fruit? And basically what low-hanging fruit, the phrase meant, things that are easy for me to uh, reach and grasp and to, uh, to turn around or to uh, address to make improvements or make adjustments or modify whatever those things were. So that was a pretty good thing. So shout out to Joe Lupo. Good luck to you. Best of luck. We're going to keep track, keep track of you. So listen, uh, Hina, you just got back from Oiga. Tell us about that. Yeah. And about our, and oh. about our guest coming on today. It, it was, it was amazing. So it was the Oklahoma Indian Gaming Association and it was held in Tulsa this year. Last year it was held in Oklahoma city. Um, there were quite a few uh, properties that that uh, were excited to be there. Um, a lot of attendance in the uh, sessions, and one of them, a lot of the attendance was Nick Ippolito's uh, player development uh, course. So when they also have Bruce McClure, who is legendary in regards to player development, and mm -hmm. but it was, from my understanding, talking to a lot of the uh, attendees, they loved both the show and the seminars. I had quite a few people um, come and visit and there were a lot of people that I, I met for the very first time. So I was very excited about that, uh, that show. It, it really brought some new technology um, forward, especially in the cashless uh, solutions. Um, and then uh, wow. quite a few um, attendees were also a little nervous about, you know, switching, you know, into the cashless world. But as you know, they were getting more, more and more educated. I think that resonated for them to go okay and feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Fantastic! So I'm wow. Excited that Oklahoma will. Yeah. Well, I saw some of the pictures. Right. We saw that. So and so, our guests today are, are from the Native American market or culture in casino uh, uh, operations. Uh, you want to bring them on, Hina? Since you, I uh, do. You know I do. Are? Um, I have had the opportunity, the privilege, and the honor of everything of not just calling them colleagues, but calling them friends. So um, our guests are today uh, Lydia Mizukas, who is uh, the director of CAGE. And then we also have Catherine Maltes, but I call her Casey, uh, and she is the CAGE manager at the property that both of them reside at. Wow. So, okay. Yes. You're coming yes. on board. Welcome to Chex Play. Welcome yes. to Chex Play. Hi. Hello. Hi. Lydia, good morning. Hello, okay, Lydia. 
Ready. And Casey is is getting there too, yeah. just, just getting that video working. You know, of course, technology <laughs> these days. I know, you know right? Talking about technology. Ooh. There she Hi. is. Ladies Hello. and gentlemen, the fabulous Hello. Lydia Hello. and Casey. Woo, 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 Hello. Woo. There they are. <laughs> Hands in the air. Good morning, Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning, morning. Bruce. Good morning. I am so excited yeah. to have you guys on the podcast. And I just want to let you guys know you are the first, um, Lydia, you're the first um, to represent the Native American. Um, oh, nice. Uh, awesome. Not as awesome. the market, but as, yep. a, a, as a tribal member as well. So I'm very excited mm -hmm. about that. Correct. And Ms. Casey? Outside of myself being a Polynesian, you are the first Polynesian outside of mm -mm. my <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to be on as well. So, yay! yay. yay. And also, this is, uh, this is the Thank first time we have uh, we have two ladies at the same time on our mm -hmm. podcast. This so is the first time they are outnumbered. They we are, are yes. multicultural <laughs> yes. all the way today to the umpteenth oh, yeah, power today. For sure. Oh, I know, right? Talk about in history. It, inclusive Woo and diversity. He's breaking like three records. <laughs> a lot of, yes, lots of diversity. Hey, that's a good stuff. That's a good topic to, topic to talk about today, by the way. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's that's huge. But both, both of you ladies are, are in the casino gaming industry and you've been in the industry for several years and you worked your way up through, I'm sure that as we all did, I know I did, I started as a dealer. You guys worked mm -hmm. your way up to, and which makes it more, uh, you appreciate your position and your roles because you learn so much coming up and you have so many mentors. Now you're mentoring others. Right. So so right. how did this all happen where you're at now as a director and a uh, manager of, of cage operations? Personally, it was never part of my plan, I should say, because I, uh, being a Native American, and a, and a tribal member from my tribe, I kind of wanted to steer away from the stigma because I'm not sure if you guys are familiar, but with um, tribally run casinos, at least our casino is they do tribal preference. And so for me growing up, I wanted to not have that stigma. I, I, a job was just handed to me. So my original plan was to just, I wanted to be a registered nurse. So I was going to nursing school. And then when I finished that, I later, uh, well, actually, I didn't even finish. Actually, I got married, had children, and then later uh, revisited again. That still wasn't part of the plan, but I went to cosmetology school. And then I thought after cosmetology school, let me just uh, get a little quick job so I could pay some bills off. So I worked as a spa attendant. And that's when I, I started getting into the casino. So I was a spa attendant at the casino, and I thought it was going to be a temporary stint. But then uh, working on the casino side, I, I, the hours were all over the place. And I was like, this does not work with mm -hmm. children. So my cousin told me about a position in the gaming commission uh, department. And so I applied for that. And I was the little receptionist. And I thought, I'll do this until I pass my TEAS test mm -hmm. to get back into the nursing program. And then an uh, opportunity opened up for me to become the administrator and um, I thought, wow, it's just, some, I don't know. I, I'm trying to become a nurse. I, I didn't mm -hmm. do too well on this TEAS test. And I thought, um, I, it just seems like doors of opportunities were opening. Mm -hmm. My mother passed away. I think it was already, uh, gosh, my daughter was like 10. So I was like 10, 11 years that my mother was gone. But I remember her always, always telling me to get involved in the tribal politics, to also get involved in the casino and understand how the business works. But I, I always push that aside and, and it just seemed to be clicking. And then later on learning, I, I didn't realize this because as a teenager, you don't ever pay attention to what your parents are doing. I, at least I did it. I was my mom's first job was working. Me neither. So. <laughs> yeah. no we weren't, she wasn't ever able to work. And then it's when very, the, uh, had a casino. Like kind of a similar story uh, to yours. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to be an architect. Oh, I was in wow. college uh, in my first semester and uh, uh, for some personal reasons, my mom got sick here in the Dominican Republic, so I came down, mm -hmm. and I got involved somehow in the gaming business and the casino business, and mm -hmm. never looked back. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, question wow. I wanted to ask you is, what what do you see? What kind of difference do you see? I mean, you, you were you were trying to be a nurse, and now you're in the mm -hmm. gaming industry. Is there any drawback, or 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 is uh, is there something in the back of your mind that says I should have stayed and be a nurse? Or are you very happy with what you do here? And are you glad that you went this route? 
I see myself being able to serve my tribe and being um, having that knowledge and turning all the education and the background that I have to serve my tribe. So I struggled for the longest time with, I have a serving personality. I, I want to help people. And I mm. felt like, gosh, but nursing, I was going to help people. This is not helping people. In my mind, that's how I've seen it. But then I have my master's degree now, but going to college, I used to always use, utilize my, my tribe and utilize the casino that we own um, for a lot of paper writing. And then it mm. clicked in my mind, like, oh, okay, I'm not obviously the entertainment industry, I wasn't thinking it more in serving customers, but I was thinking for my tribe and being the example for my tribe, Mm -hmm. being able to utilize the education background that I have to be able to still serve my tribe and get into the politics. Um, Because I also, (laughs) I volunteer a lot for the tribe, my tribe as well. So that's what I kept. um, That's what felt more fulfilling for me in doing it for that reason. Mm -hmm. And you you help a lot of people while you're at it. I mean, the the, the money that comes. Yes. Well, it has yeah, it helps helped. our tribe economically yes. for sure. Economically, mm-hmm. has put a lot of people to work. Has has yeah, brought definitely. a great future to uh to the Indian nation. Oh gosh, the U.S. Yep. So. That like I was mentioning earlier, like my that was my mother's first job because obviously and she was involved in the '99 compact and 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 fighting for us to be able to go from a bingo hall to our casino, and that's when we started getting insurance. None of us were having to rely on welfare and things like that. And um, she was given an opportunity. She didn't have a very good background. She was in and out of jail and prison and things like that. And so she wasn't always ever going to get an opportunity to be able to have a real job. So she was a compliance officer for our casino. And so that that all gave her that opportunity and then went on from there. Yeah. Gen- generational opportunities now. For sure. Exactly. So it's awesome. Yep. Kudos to your mom, though. I mean, for for to I have know. like that, but to keep striving. But she always told you, you know, get involved. Yes, keep yep. all the time. Yep, all the time. Do you feel that the that now that the stigma? Um, do you still feel that it's still there, or do you feel that you know what you have done? You you are working to help build that and get rid of that. Mm-hmm. Stigma, to say, you know, look, we're doing this for a reason, it, and it's kind of similar to mm-hmm. I think you you. You just told me one time about a about having your own your own family business. Could you please mm-hmm. say that? Because after because that was an oh, amazing, right. that was an amazing you know explanation. So I didn't so I didn't realize a lot of that that stigma had a lot to do with me putting that on myself. Mm-hmm. I know that um, it, it can come from others as well, but it was a lot of that own personal stigma. Like I want to work for something that I have, and nothing was mm-hmm. given out to me. Common. But it obviously took a lot of maturity and just growing up mm-hmm. and seeing like I have a lot of my friends. I have. I used to always be a little jealous because I was like, wow, their dad it, they got an easy job because their dad owned a dairy or they owned some kind of engineer company. And I was like, man, but I I used to always feel like I had to work so 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 hard to prove myself and and um come out and have a degree and do something with myself but they they would go to college and just come back and be like oh I'm gonna work for my dad's farm or I'm gonna work for my daddy's business or whatever and then I started thinking to myself like what is the difference between what they're doing and their parents obviously wanted to set them up with a job with their business and my tribe owning a casino doing the same thing so I had to stop thinking of it as I was getting something handed out because obviously other people do it with their businesses for their children to help them. And so I, when I started thinking of it in that way, then I didn't think of it as, oh, I'm giving a, um, but then I also made sure like for me personally, it was important that I, I earned it as well. Like obviously I started mm-hmm. from the bottom. I went to college um, when I became the administrator of our gaming commission. Um, I, it, it was required to have a bachelor's degree. Wow. I didn't even finish my associate. So I had to start and finish that. So I made sure I, I, at least I can prove that I worked even for it as well. That and, was and, the, and the journey hasn't ended. And so, and so, no. so KC, has it been similar for you? I mean, you're not coming mm-hmm. from the Native American nation coming up in that culture, but you coming in from, uh, say, Polynesian background, right? Is that the correct term? Is that Polynesian? That's right. Correct. I'm, and then <laughs> my um, dad, he is in the Navy, so he met my mom in the Philippines. So that's wow. how that story happened. <laughs> so I ended, I ended up here. Tell the story, um, tell the story, all of it. Tell yes, all this. <laughs> we, so, you know, we, we were stationed a couple of places that I don't really remember much of. Um, stationed in Japan. And then from Japan, we went to the Philippines, which I was a little bit older, about 
five. So I was able to remember that. And then we spent three years there. And then where, where, where in the Philippines were you in the Philippines? And um, it's Subic base is mm -hmm. what it was yeah, called. Yeah. yeah. So we were there and there yeah. was a lot of people like us too. You know, <laughs> a lot of American kids there yeah. at the school getting driven out there. And then when the next step was, which is the final step before he retired was we moved to the central Valley where we're at now. So okay. that's where we live in California. And then um, I started my career in the casino industry. It is just, I needed a job at, after I graduated high school in 1998, I had a child already. So I needed, I needed a, a full-time job. So I applied my mom, you know, liked to visit the casino. She loved bingo and that's how I was introduced to it. And um, I applied for a job as a cashier, just completely didn't know what I was dealing with. They, you know, told me the amount of money I was going to be handling. And I was like, whoa, you know, because the <laughs> yeah. most I have ever handled in, you know, fast food was like maybe a thousand dollars or something. And then mm -hmm. you move well past that, you know, but it's been great. You know, I've, I've mm -hmm. moved up from cashier to supervisor and then shift manager eventually. And then I move it up to the department manager, which I'm at now. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm challenged in this position. So I'm happy here for the time being, but um, I was able to do that in 10 years so, from cashier mm -hmm. to supervisor, shift manager to the department manager. That's pretty, and, that's pretty um, awesome. It took me like oh, yeah. 80 years to get through that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it seemed like it seemed like it. So, so, but, 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 uh, but the thing I want to really hit, um, and I want to hit the, the subject of uh, diversity inclusion. And did you see, or did you realize or have a sense that you have a heavier challenge than, than others who weren't black and Brown or female? Um, uh, did any of you experience those, those things that happened? Those are, they're real. Yeah, I I think I kind of, I may have felt that more as I Ooh. got into the upper management mm -hmm. is, you know, it was where you feel you can't, you know, you're not sure of what it is, but you feel something is not the same. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to put into mm -hmm. words, you know, when things happen, mm -hmm. you you do feel like you have to step up a little bit more. You have to show we're able to do whatever the task is, you know, mm -hmm. we're able mm -hmm. to complete it. So I didn't really feel in the lower levels in the cage department, it tends to be more female. So um, mm -hmm. we have a few males, the males are usually end up in management somehow, you know, but we don't have a lot of males. So mm -hmm. I felt really supported by the leaders I've had um that's great. up until that point yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. that's fantastic that, that's one thing being a you know being a parent right and and have in having a child and, and then trying to find that job to to be able to sustain you and your child right and then to also have those hours of going okay I'm going to work here and then I have to go home you know take care of my child and then going back mm -hmm. towards you do you find that because I know that you are now a grandmother? Congratulations! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. No, you're I not. Cute. Cute grandchildren. Hey, Very cute. I have my calculator. Yeah. 1998 and all that stuff going on. <laughs> Wait a minute. No way. I know. <laughs> she I does know. things fast, huh? It's just. <laughs> it was just you know, that's the Polynesians. You know, just that's they're, cute. They're all in the water. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me. All right. Cute. <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah. Find, do you find that? you know, um, of being a mom, um, and now being a grandmother, and also working, um, do you do you, how do you to help others out there? Um, how do you manage that both you and Lydia, because both of you mm -hmm. are, are parents and stuff. And both of you are in mm -hmm. management. Um, and you came mm -hmm. up in the ranks and as women, right? So um, mm -hmm. leaders, how would you tell everyone yes. else, girls, you can do this, you can do this. You could. Mm -hmm. I, I think it takes, you know, planning. You got to be dedicated. Um, I had support. I was fortunate, like, to watch my children. Because um, mm -hmm. while I was working, you know, the late hours, working swings and graves, those hours that everybody has to work when you first start, you know, my parents mm -hmm. helped me a great deal taking care of my kids, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to really worry too much about who was going to be staying with them, but I was missing out on a lot. And that's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of sometimes the trade-off, you know, you're trying to build something. I know that this, 
job is what we need because I need stability. I need benefits for my children, mm-hmm. you know, and they, the casino has provided that, you know, they've mm-hmm. provided stability for my family and the benefits that, it, you know, everybody needs. So mm-hmm. I think that was what kept me determined. And then I had a good support at, at home as well. And, and at work as well, right? Um, yeah, and definitely at work. I, I went through, you know, some leaders that I wasn't too close to because I was a supervisor. So, you know, when mm-hmm. directors at that point, you don't have as much um, contact. But I did have, mm-hmm. you know, three directors so far that I feel like since in the, I'm in the position I'm in, I am able to really learn from them Mm -hmm. one-on-one different Mm -hmm. ways to handle different, you know, projects, problems, um, and just know, knowing other styles and then, you know, working things out together. So Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot at, you know, a lot from leaders, I would say. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Lydia, how about you? So my experience, um, losing my mother, I lost my mother at 22 and she would have been my, my main support. Um, and then I had a stepfather, but he moved on afterwards. So I didn't have the the same, um, uh, I wasn't fortunate like that with uh, the help, but one thing I did learn whenever I finally, cause I stay, I was a stay at home mom for the first 10 years of my older children's life. And then we had a, ch- a child, six, seven years I have twins. So after my twins were born, um, so there's a large gap there. So, but what I had to learn when, when I had my fourth one is to not to be afraid to ask for help. And that there is resources mm-hmm. when you really, really want something, um, they're all out there. So it opportunities opened up whenever I was, um, when I made the decision to go back to school, I made a decision to work. Um, I had a neighbor that used to always offer her help and support. She, I, she became like, I call her my spiritual mom because she mm-hmm. literally came in around the time my mother just passed. We bought the home, we moved in, and then she was just an awesome support system for me. But I was always like uh, turning away the help that was being offered to me all the time because it was the trust and, 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 and how could someone be so nice to want to help me? And then, um, opportunity also opened up for my, my husband worked with an uh, individual for a very long time. And he's like, my wife has a daycare. She only accepts very few uh, children, but she does have an opening. So mm-hmm. it was that um, willingness to be able to receive the help that was already there. And, and then just the, the trust and stuff like that. So my support ended up becoming, you know, just having to rely on others but um, th- now they're still very close friends. My little guy's already <laughs> going to be 11 in October. So he's our youngest. And then I got my um, older ones as well. So it was honestly just learning to accept the help and ask for the help because it is there. That's wonderful. My big thing that I'm very, very big on with my children was um, quality over quantity. So obviously I knew I wasn't going to be there like a full-time mom all the time. But the time I spent with them, it was like engaged completely with them. Mm-hmm. The whole thing about you mentioned opportunity and and mm-hmm. Lydia and, 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 and Casey, both of you, and and he mm-hmm. and all of us, you know, someone told me also, you know, it's funny how you listen to certain things that, that come through and you have to filter out the noise yeah. and, and know what mm-hmm. you should really pick up on. And also looking at people who did it the wrong way and you learn very mm-hmm. fast. But, oh, yeah, um, for sure. But, but some, there was a lot of noise out there. But, you know, one thing I did realize, mm-hmm. although I didn't feel like I was any different from anyone else. You know, I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like I had anything more lows to push, but I always did feel, especially coming out of the military and getting into the business, Mm -hmm. that um, I needed to prepare myself for Mm -hmm. opportunities when they came because opportunities came very few and far Mm -hmm. in between, right? And, you know, in the back room, Mm -hmm. in the back room is (laughs) what happens to determine when something opens up, they say, I know a guy. I know a guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's how things happen. Yeah, yeah I honestly. know a guy. Mm-hmm. They don't say I know a girl. They don't know say I know a gal. I know a guy. Right. Yeah, and you're that's, right. Mm-hmm. That's, that's mm-hmm. the real world, right? Yeah. That is. Yeah. And and so the fact is, you want to be able to stand out. You want to separate yourselves from the rest. And that's probably mm-hmm. common with uh, everyone on this, this panel right now, that you did mm-hmm. things to stand out from the rest, to make mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah you know, uh, stand out a little bit and say when they were opening a casino and say, hey, who could we put in to come in? Who could uh, be, a, be a real good represented representation? Yeah. And you don't have yeah. to have all of the necessary skill set, but at least mm-hmm. have the ability to present it in the right way. Because right. one thing you can do is probably teach 
a skill, almost anybody, but you can't teach your personality. No, 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 the the presence. So we've talked about that a few times. So, so I can really relate to that. And so it's, it's, that's, Mm -hmm. this business is, is incredible. And this this, coincidentally, my mother who encouraged me to get into the business, she was a K shift manager. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, interesting. She was a, she was a nice. shift manager and came so far from the casino, but she was not. She worked in the factories and in, 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 in uh, oh, factories awesome. that made clothes and she the sewing machine. If you looked mm-hmm. at her legs, you could see all the needle marks from the uh, the pins and needles that were in the closing that she was Just sticking st- them in, yeah. sticking in her legs because they were dragging across her legs yeah. and they had pins and pins and things. <laughs> and just, they used to make uh, army, wow. army army uniforms in the factory. That's what she did. So, How awesome! Yeah, That's then, so cool. That is. When I came out of the military, yeah. Atlantic City, Atlantic City had introduced casinos, and she said, "Hey, son, what, guess what I'm doing?" I said, "What? I'm working in the cage." And she had arthritis, and her mm-hmm. fingers were all bent up. And I says, <laughs> "You show me how to cut these chips." And she <laughs> says, "Mom, wow. let me That's do that." Awesome. She says, "No, I got this." Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh-huh. yeah. oh yeah. She passed so those away. are the stories I love yeah. hearing being yeah. in the casino of people yeah. starting before the casino came into the, the valley. They had jobs like that. People were just, my dad's still a farm laborer till this day, but people were doing things like that, working at factories and stuff. And then this brought opportunity for a lot of people. And I love hearing that they started from, I was in security and then they mm-hmm. got to slowly move up to being coming uh, HR, you know, trainee mm-hmm. or something like that, but mm-hmm. they started and worked their ways up and, that's one th- the things I saw when I came in. I was like, wow, there's opportunity for growth. Yeah. No matter where what direction you want to go. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot, a lot of opportunity to move. Mm-hmm. If you know, if something else fits you better and there's better opportunities, definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity oh, awesome. in the casino, so much. A little little yeah. city we yeah. have. Well, that that's one thing I like about the both of you is that you you're not only because you because you you started from and I don't want to say from the ground up but you you know you started as mm-hmm. the front line right um but you mm-hmm. are also mentoring too mm-hmm. so if you see someone here you're going okay why are you here kind of like um Joseph when uh Casey you and I and, and Lydia when we were at right. um mm-hmm. oh, yes. conference right that's yes. right. and I'm like you know when we first met <laughs> Joseph um uh, Where were you? I'm sorry, you cut didn't out. didn't realize that he had worked for you guys, right? You cut out a little bit. Where were you at when you saw this was happening? We were at the CCT conference in, in oh, okay. um, the mm-hmm. Casino Pass Track. Oklahoma. Yeah, in okay. Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And um, a young man, his name is Joseph, who is now a GM. Where these two had met him was when he first wanted to uh, go into the, um, the casino industry. Um, so you know, they, they met him and they said, Hey, you know, come mm-hmm. work for us. And so he did. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, and mm-hmm. um, so he, he just shot up like a cannon. But when I, when I met him, um, I had met him at a different uh, property and um, I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> You're way too talented. What are you doing here? Is it, yes. you, he, you know, moving up into the range, you know, and things like that, because the property that he was at, he was, his sights were set on a certain position. Mm-hmm. I said, no, that mm-hmm. person is going to remain there until. As a big personality. Fired, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so Joseph I, does. Yeah. Move. Yes. Oh, wow. and now he, I only met him once. Really? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was, it so, was pretty amazing. So what like a movie, you two, Joseph. Yeah. I know. <laughs> what do you think you for, I mean, when, when you have employees that, because right now we are so, so short staffed. Everywhere oh, oh is so short staffed. Mm-hmm. What do you two do to enhance that or, or, or say, you know what? We got this. We, we're, we're going to move forward and we only have a few, um, but here's what we're going to do. What do you mm-hmm. like to do? Um, for me, because you know my hands are in the operation, Mm-hmm. Um, we have, um, with COVID, it's been hard to keep the number of staff, supervisors, and managers that we need to operate, you know, the cage department. So what we've done is we've kind of combined some duties that we normally wouldn't be doing as managers. Mm-hmm. We're, we have to run the floor. You know, that's the most important thing because we have to have all the kiosks up. So the mm-hmm. manager stepped in to, you know, supervisor roles. 
And then the supervisors, you know, they have the support and they sometimes they need to step into a cashier role, you know, and that's Mm -hmm. kind of what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know, it looks like we're getting to the right amount of cashiers, but um, we're I'm starting to realize that um, a lot of people don't come to the to the cage department for longevity. They kind of get their foot in and they're there. Mm -hmm. They're great. They're there for a few years and then they move on. Um, they want to be dealers. They want to be dealers. They do. They, <laughs> you're right. Is. I know. You're right. Know. They I, do. You want the tips. Okay. Yes, yeah. oh, they gosh. do. They do. You, you know, you, you guys and, could be dealers I, too. You make more money. Just... I thought about <laughs> it. I thought yeah. about it. I get teased a lot because I'm like, why would you leave your director position and go be a dealer? And like, you know, in you know, Tampa, just, that's what they I like the connection with people. In mm. Tampa, at Hard Rock Tampa, the dealers were making such good money. And, and those, Nothing. Oh no shame God. on the dealers in Tampa. I just want to let that oh, let yeah, them know. Yeah. <laughs> but there were dealers from other. I mean, the directors from other departments that were making less wow. money than, than some of the dealers there at the time. At times, and wow. So, you know, I'm open to it. I'll send you an application. <laughs> I'll, I'll send, I'll send, no, I'm just kidding. I just need to learn. I just need to learn those games. <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. starts off. You know, we don't come out of the womb dealing craps. You know what I mean? So exactly. Right. I know. There's no school <laughs> special school for it. No. Well, actually, now there is. There's a there's a couple that I know about. Yeah. That. Oh, absolutely. And now there is. But before but, you're yes. right. But with if they Casey, when they when they do go and you and you and I know you, you you say, you know what? Good luck to you. We 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 want you to be mm-hmm. where you know you're 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 going, you know. Um do you, so so now you've lost a really great one, right? Do you are, are you guys cross training? Are you guys, you know, what what are you guys doing to for those out there that are going, I need some help on how we can get more people or train the people that we have. And we, so we tried something really interesting um, over the last three months because we found out that the people we were hiring didn't realize how much they were going to be working with kiosks and machines. Okay. So, you know, the world is quickly turning to automated. Mm -hmm. So now our cage team is heavier on kiosks then we are on the front line. So some of them don't like that, you know, so, um, you know, they're in there more than they are on the front line. Of course, no tips, tips Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. So um, we began training backwards where we did when they come in, they start doing kiosk so that they know and they get introduced to the hard work first Mm -hmm. because it is tough. And then Mm -hmm. um, after about three weeks of that, then we put them in the front line. So, that has made a difference. It really has, because I think when we start them on the front line, this is sweet. I'm getting money. You know, this is easy on my body, you know, but the kiosk side is the physical labor. So it, it has changed things a bit. We so still have like, some work to do. So they have a feeling of mm-hmm. getting something more rather than getting something less. After yes. Getting and involved. That- you need to say that again mm-hmm. so other listeners can hear this and maybe follow that model. Because, you know, we're in places <laughs> like uh, it was a Resorts World and so forth. These places opened up. They're, they're very heavy cashless. And mm-hmm. so when it came to time to recruit, wow. uh, when they came recruit from across country and people transitioned and went out there and they, mm-hmm. then they learned that it's mostly cashless or heavy cashless. Mm-hmm. That, you know, those, some of the comments I've heard and the feedback was, oh, man, I'm going to make less money because I won't get the tips and things. So yeah. your approach is... Um, Casey is to go in and and introduce that part of the model going in Mm -hmm. and then uh, then almost you almost feel like it's a reward that now you're getting to a position where you're you know um, more interaction with the guests right Mm -hmm. and then possibility for tips no that that and that honestly was was kind of the thing like you know I didn't want them to you know, feel that the tips were going to be guaranteed or a regular Correct. thing. So when they know when Entitled. they're in a window, you may, yes, yes, yeah. that was kind of how it was, but it worked out. And the way you explained mm-hmm. it is it, 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 it's, it's a real way to look at it. It's, it's perfect. Kind of like a reward or once you've learned mm-hmm. that and you're good at that, you know, then you mm-hmm. could do the window. Cause Very we good. are, we're, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're moving to one cage area now. So mm-hmm. We know that with that, we're going to push more people out to our kiosk, you know, runners. Prices. So they, they have that coming soon. But, you know, that's kind of the, the we have to accept that some people will move on because physically their body can't do it. 
you know, right. we have a lot of, we have a lot of people that are, you know, at about 20 years of working in our department. So then that would put them almost, you know, pretty much almost at retirement. So you have mm-hmm. to think, can they physically work their body that long? You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's not for them, you know, and we encourage them however the way they want to handle it. If, if they want to transfer, we could find them something suitable, kind of help them in that way. But Wow. That's, that's just, you know, it's kind of just happened. Yeah. It, it kind of happened where everything. It. Well, I just <laughs> learned just now. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. Oh, I'm glad <laughs> to share it. Yeah. You also did an uplift in your customer service. And, and, and let me explain a little bit of when they know those kiosks. Explain it, explain it, explain it. What yeah. happened and, and all the, all the you know, concerns and the, and the issues that these customers go through, right? So when they come to the cage and go, oh, hey, they go, no, nope, I got you. We, we, you know, I understand. And they, mm-hmm. they can help them, continuously help them versus, oh, yeah, hold on, let me, let, let me get somebody that, you know. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. said they understand both sides and they're able to, you know, continue the customer service that you guys are so, um you know, used to training and, and providing. So, I mean, that's, that's a brilliant idea, Casey. Yeah, it was, it was. And then, you know what? I can't, I can't say like, it was my idea. It's my team. You know, they said, what if we do it? The scheduling team, you know, the management mm-hmm. that does that, they said, Hey, I think we need to do this because they are getting too comfortable. Like, you know, like you said, <laughs> you know, doing that. And I don't do kiosk, you know, it's kind of right. like, it's the thing that nobody wants to do. And I get it. I get it. You know, right. so that was kind of like came from management just with the scheduling and what they were mm-hmm. seeing. Cause you know, we were having people like not want to work in our department transfer out. So we're, you know, and Lydia saw it when she first came on board, she's like, Whoa, yeah. all these people are transferring out. But we had mm-hmm. to explain to her the tip portion. Yeah. They're going to tipping departments, the you know, resource, every single one of them. The resource of empowerment is amazing. Yes. And just mm-hmm. empowering your people to make those decisions and to get those ideas and innovation. Mm-hmm. You know, the best oh, yeah. ideas come from out there and not from here, right? Not they from, do. And I admit me. that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things we have to remember is obviously we're in 2022. So everything is moving towards not only the COVID stuff that happened, but automation mm-hmm. as well. So AI. like Casey was saying, a lot of stuff had to be a lot of dual purpose um, and consolidation. Mm-hmm. And and then making them like the employees feel like they're still needed, obviously, because at the end of the day, who's going to be servicing those kiosk machines? So yes, you know we're going to need like every cashless. one of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so Miguel, as as a former GM, mm-hmm. um, and and hearing all of the all of these, did, were you as a GM also allowing your management team to? Um, to be creative and to and and to inspire and 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 to lead and to um, allow them to make those decisions and give them that empowerment to run the department because um, that's important coming from the actual you're, you're reading my mind here. General manager. You know, you're reading <laughs> my mind. You're reading my mind a little yeah. bit. Here. I love one it. Of the, yeah. One yeah. of the things when, when you're in charge of a property or or, or any any uh, industry is. You hire people because you believe they're good at what they do and they know what they're doing. If you do that, then you should let them do their job. Uh, There are a lot of uh, GMs and managers out there and and people in charge of operations that nothing gets done unless it goes through me. (laughs) And that is a problem problem because if if I don't trust you, then I shouldn't have you there. There's only uh, one, Miguel. I'll, 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 I'll give you all the tools. Remember, my job is not to is not to do your job. My job is to give you the tools to do your job. If and if there is a problem when you're doing your job, then you come to me, and we will fix it. We right. will we will fix it. We'll get you if you don't have uh, the right tools. We'll get the right tools. And, and, and that is something that a lot of people don't understand. You know, if, mm-hmm. if my job is to do everybody's job, I don't think I can do it. I'm not enough. Mm-hmm. I had under me 10 to 12 different departments. So mm-hmm. there is not enough time in a day for me to go out there and do everybody's job. Hold everybody's hand. <laughs> yeah. Most of the yeah. time, I didn't know 
what everybody else was doing in a day-to-day -day operation. I was doing my job. Mm -hmm. Then I was going from place to place, see if I was needed somewhere mm -hmm. and how things were going. Uh, yeah. As long as that is the, the proper way of doing it, people are going to be happy with you. But once mm -hmm. you become a micromanager and mm -hmm. nothing is done, I, I, I hear stories of people requesting something and weeks later, they still don't have an answer. Yeah. And they can move yeah. on because if they move on, their boss is going to come down on them with, with Thor's hammer and whack them on top of the head. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I if can't you, imagine these two ladies would be like that at all. I can't no, imagine. No. If you do, That's not my leadership do, style. No, 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 I can't you imagine. You're dead too. No. So you yeah. have to create a, 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 a parallel where people can do their job. Mm -hmm. right. and that's what I always mm -hmm. tell my people when they come in. I, I stole and I stole this from one of my bosses one time. I met with the guy the first day I was hired to be uh, the director of operations uh, for a property in South America. And mm -hmm. the guy sat me down the first day, my first day of work. Uh, I went early in the morning. I was there before him, waiting for him. And the guy tells me, mm -hmm. you are here because we believe that you're the best for the job. One thing I'm going to tell you only, I know you know what you're doing, but mm -hmm. if there is a problem and you come and tell me, immediately becomes our problem and we're going to fix it. Um, if mm -hmm. you don't tell me, it's your problem. Mm -hmm. And then you see how you're going to fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. talking. Oh my goodness. That's talking in my head. And I, I carry it mm -hmm. ever since. And that's what I tell my people. We, we are. We are here to do it together. Right. If you need me, I'm here for Kat you. Catherine felt mm -hmm. that. She felt that. Yeah. I did. I did. <laughs> She's saying like, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah, it's true, have, though. I don't have a much experience with tribal gaming. And I know there are differences between uh, uh, a normal commercial casino and a tribal casino. So, uh, but the one thing I like the most about tribal is be, they're there for one reason. And the reason is to help the community, to help the tribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of the things that they do, because I got some friends that work in them, and I've learned a little bit from them, is mm -hmm. everything is geared to the benefit of the tribe. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is, to me, it's paramount. It's a great mm -hmm. model. Mm -hmm. if, if we all, in our positions, did our job, in order to benefit the company, mm -hmm. because the company is a tribe, Correct. and the company okay. would prospect. And oh, yeah. that's throughout the years, that's what I've seen with tribal gaming. They all prospect mm -hmm. because right. it's their money is their own benefit, mm -hmm. it's their own benefit, mm -hmm. it's their own benefit. So they do it the right way. It's not anybody's right. agenda that we're following because yeah. a lot of people, yeah. a lot of uh, people create their own agenda of how they're mm -hmm. going to run a property. And that sometimes is detrimental to the property. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. sadly. Yeah. I mean, the thing I love with a majority of those tribally run casinos too is not, it's not even, it, it goes even beyond just their own community. It becomes the surrounding communities. Absolutely. I see a lot of them help fire department, mm -hmm. police station, mm -hmm. schools. Around, and I'm like, oh my gosh, if, I wish uh, yeah. they, they talked more about that or, mm -hmm. or they were given more credit for it, I should say. Yes. Because it's really mm -hmm. not. And that's something that I love about tribal gaming. I've never had the opportunity to work for any tribe. Uh, I don't think mm -hmm. I'll have it because I'm, I'm partially retired now. Mm -hmm. and I, we're involved in other, other type of businesses and we got the podcast and we're enjoying the, this uh, awesome. partly retired life, new life. That mm -hmm. we're Miguel, because mm -hmm. Miguel's partly retired. I'm not. I'm out here working right now. So he, he in You're still in the casino, Bruce. You're I'm in the Jersey. He's in Punta Cana, laying on the beach right oh, now. Oh wow! The beach behind that curtain. That, that's right. That's a that's a work trip. You know, <laughs> I, he thinks he's yeah. tricking me. Hey, are you guys? <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, you know, and I worked with, and I had that going back to what you said, Lydia, about the um per perception that people have about tribal gaming, that about the preference mm -hmm. element right. of it. Well, I had that that um, uh, you know, I wasn't so eager to work for a tribal 
nation when I was mm -hmm. in the United States working in the casino. So when it was presented to mm -hmm. me about working for a tribal ca casino, which was the, the Seminoles, I was mm -hmm. hesitant because the, the thing out there was, yeah, you're going to work for them. You're going to train for the, the, the tribal nation. Then they're going to move you out and put somebody to replace you. That's a Native American. And that was the, the, uh, the truth. That's how yeah. the feeling was mm -hmm. you know, uh, out there. And so I learned quickly with the Seminole tribe that that wasn't true at all. It wasn't true. There was a preference uh, element in the in the organization. There is rather, and actually, right. coincidentally, uh, just turned out that I actually became one of the mentors of the program. Oh, okay. And and the tribe, I mean, we're all the same, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, they were. They looked like me. We, we looked like each other, right? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh yeah. And and, yeah. and so forth. But there wasn't. It didn't happen that way. If you could do the job just like anybody else you weren't really looked over it was equal evenly balanced if mm -hmm. they took the best and the most talented person for the position you know right um but what i want to kind of segue into mm -hmm. is do either of you uh something i learned when i was kind of hard-headed about it i didn't really understand the concept but once i understood i said wow that's golden do mm -hmm. any of you mm -hmm. train anybody to take your position i have not i have not I, yet i've done that yeah. I, I did that with my, my, when I received the, the administrator position, um, the person was uh, let go for whatever reasons. And then mm -hmm. I took over, but it was with the, the, the agreement was basically I had to get my bachelor's degree, but mm -hmm. for six months, I was left as the receptionist doing du dual purpose job, not getting paid for it, basically doing a, mm -hmm. a receptionist position and the administrator position until the mm -hmm. position opened. And then I was able to apply, but I didn't like that feeling. I didn't like that feeling of, I was literally just a brand new receptionist. Didn't know how to do an administrator job. And I was just learning. I was asking questions left and right, went to the mm -hmm. tribal side, talked to finance because she was responsible for a lot of the finances and invoices and traveling expenses, everything. So I was asking lots of questions, going to the casino side, asking the administrator on that side for help and stuff like that. But I didn't like the feeling. I didn't like the feeling of I was not taught to do anything, just to sit there, watch TV and study for your test. That's the you casino want to, business. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't like that. I kept saying, I want to help. I want to help. But yeah. anyways, when she left, I thought, you know, okay, um, I had to go on a leave for a little bit, but then I came back and then um, they, I, once I got the administrator position, we hired a receptionist. And in my, the back of my mind, I was like, I'm going to make her administrative assistant and mm -hmm. I'm going to teach her everything I know so mm -hmm. that she's not left in the same position. And at the end of the day, the business has to go on. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting a, a concussion before we hired her and I had to go on a leave, which was unexpected. So I, I was thinking to myself, like, gosh, I don't want to leave whoever takes over this uh, receptionist position in the same mm -hmm. position I was. So as soon as I got back, I was healed up and came back to work. I, I put that on my agenda to eventually change her position to administrative assistant. I, I made sure she knew everything and anything mm -hmm. I knew. I didn't have her come to all the meetings that I was going to with the commission as long as I was there. But when I was out, I was like, I want her to take over and, and be, be able to, I want to feel comfortable when I travel, mm -hmm. if I would, ever had to go on a medical leave or whatever. That's what it I does. I made sure to set her up before I left. That's what so it was does. like at the end of the day, when I was home healing, the business had to still succeed. Correct. The business still had to go on. Why mm -hmm. keep all this information to myself? Yeah, you'll be, you'll have mm -hmm. a tube, you'll be on your tube with a tube in your mouth trying to, hey, just, just trying to. <laughs> I right? know. No, I, no way. I don't want to <laughs> stress to, like that. I'm trying <laughs> to work. And I do. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. To write, just to um i misunderstood your question because we, okay. they do do in, they do do internships mm -hmm. where we work at and um i thought you meant did i ever mentor no, you know a I'm member not, you I, know I, for my position I, and not, that's what i was saying i'm not no talking to, about but, internships i'm not I'm, I'm, okay you're, you're, you understood exactly what i said it's exactly what i'm saying <laughs> when you identify and it's not favoritism let me under, let me make mm -hmm. it clear oh no 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 it's not no. When I, well when you say if you selected somebody to take your job, sometimes people can perceive that as favoritism, but that's a good thing. Oh, sometimes yeah. there's yeah. a, old, there's a, I forget the name of this um, philosophy uh, where, you know, the, the bell curve, you know, there's 10% that, you know, the, the high achievers, the 10% and the 20% mm -hmm. of this, and you got the 30%, 40% of the discontent, mal malcontents and so forth. And you bring them up one at a time to the other side. Well, the thing is, mm -hmm. if people see that you're giving attention to particular persons, 
um, for whatever special pet projects and things, other people see that and they mm -hmm. want, they have the same desire. They want to mm -hmm. also be that person that's selected and they'll start saying, well, what's that person doing different than me? And then they'll start possibly mm -hmm. doing some of those things and becoming, they move up the, uh, on the bell curve a little bit, you know, it's kind of complicated, mm -hmm. but in general oh, sense, yeah. it's not a bad thing to pick a few a persons or two to actually take your job. We definitely do that um, where we're at. And then there's, there's tasks and jobs and they're management tasks. If I can have somebody take over two of the tasks that I need to do, like one of the shift managers, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I'm more available to do other things or do things for Lydia or we're able to do. Mm -hmm. So I've always, mm -hmm. you know, from one of my directors in the past, she mm -hmm. always was really big into teaching. So mm -hmm. I took mm -hmm. that from her as far as, you know, empower your shift managers to do a little mm -hmm. bit more absolutely um, uh, of your tasks. So you're more available to, you know, bring on new tasks, projects so we can have mm -hmm. more, you know, and that, and that's yeah. been, I followed that ever since, absolutely. you know, just always mm -hmm. including them. So they know they're not even necessarily the one handling it, but Hey, come with me. So, you know, we could look at how we're going to complete this mm -hmm. and it's just learning, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know how it is in the casino industry, like there's not, you know, an identical situation that happens. Everything's a little bit different. So, oh, gosh, you know, you got to yeah. step in and handle it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we for sure do a yeah. lot of um, just empowering. And so when they do apply for the next position, they do have some some experience to put forward, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. moving forward future wise that you would want to be a GM or you would like to be something different uh, or work in a different department or stay within um, the, uh, I should say the cash services and the financial part. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I, just, I want to go beyond just cage and, um, and vault. I'm learning it, but it's just, for me, I see it as at my age, I, it's just a stepping stone. And I want, I don't foresee myself being a GM, but you never know. But I just, never I'm open never. even to moving. I know, right? I never. can't see myself doing that, but um, that, that's why I'm trying to learn. I'm learning cage. I would love to learn tables. I love to learn slots. I have a cousin of mine that I'm like, hey, uh, groom me a little bit. Teach me because it's just so fascinating. I was stuck on the regulatory side. I shouldn't say stuck. I loved it for seven years regulatory is just very you know very strict very regiment and I love that mm -hmm. but now on the operations side I was like oh my gosh I've been missing out on so much so I'm I'm open to moving to other states and I bet I you had no idea awesome. that I bet mm -hmm. you had no idea you were going to be in the cage department a year ago I sure didn't and I remember even walking if I ever just went to lunch I'm like oh yeah no fraternizing no fraternizing <laughs> can't yes, make friends like can't make friends on the operations side so now I love yes. it I'm like Ooh, I can yeah. have lunch with people and talk with people and yeah, one, it's one awesome. so I'm that very I, open one of the things that I struggle with every time I move to another job is just before I took it or when mm -hmm. I went for the interview says, am I good enough to do this? Uh, yeah, that's uh, me. Yeah. I feel doing this. Uh, but mm -hmm. then it dawned, it dawned on me and says, wait a minute, I've seen so many people that I know they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. and they're doing it. Yes, that's, that's what I struggled with when I went from the regulatory side. Like I saw yeah. this big position director and I'm like, I, have, I know I have my master's, but I don't have the experience. I don't know if I can do it. I can do it. But you're right. I had to think if this person know. could do it or if these people could yeah. do it. And, I, and not only that, but everybody kept telling me of how awesome of a team that there was mm -hmm. already established in the Cajun mm -hmm. Vault. They already had, like Casey said, over 20 years of experience. People stay, stayed in that department for a very long time. So I had to put a lot of trust as well on the team. Mm -hmm. And when, as I got there and started to get to know everybody, I was like, oh yeah, she knows her stuff and she knows her stuff. And you just can't be a, my, I'm, I'm not a micromanager like by nature anyways, but I have to trust that they're going to do their job and just follow mm -hmm. up, follow up with me and, and, and keep me in the loop with a lot of stuff. So yes. But that's a quality really... of, a, that's quality of leadership. That's quality yeah. of leadership mm -hmm. to say, Hey, Hey Don, listen, I don't know. You're, you're the best at what you do and I can't really do what you know how to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm going to rely on you to really help me along the way to get this to where we move sure. because that person yeah. needs a person to report to. That's going to, that they're going to have confidence in, you know, you can make the clothes, but you can't sell the clothes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you can sell the clothes, but you can't make the deal. You don't have oh, the yeah. ability to make that deal. 
to 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 mm-hmm. to, to help the the person that sells the clothes and the person that moves the clothes mm-hmm. that that makes the clothes oh, rather. Yeah. Am I making? I'm not even making sense. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Yeah, somebody, it t- somebody's it's, talking it sounds like me. it takes a team. So, yeah. It takes a team to be able to do all it these things. It definitely does. Yeah. yeah. Take all the credit. And, and, and the then that communication a goes a long way. Oh, yeah. Yes, they need a leader. Mm-hmm. In you case know, knows, if I don't understand something, I'll ask questions. I'll ask her to show me or, or you know, because I, I like to pride myself on at least understanding and knowing what she's talking about or what they're doing and stuff like that, especially being new to Cage. So. And she's been awesome. Mm-hmm. She's been really good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't mm-hmm. like, like, I know Lydia, I knew that Lydia was, this is just a stepping stone for her. And I think it's great because she's going to do bigger things, you know, in mm-hmm. with the tribe, whether that's at the casino, whether mm-hmm. that's on the government side, I could see that. Mm-hmm. And I've seen that with past leaders too. Like this was just a mm-hmm. learning experience, but they want to understand. Mm-hmm. So you could speak to you know that about what that department does and I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's awesome and great that mm-hmm. you're able to do that and then meet people because I never knew Lydia and she never knew our names either you know like mm-hmm. we, we it was good that faces. we were able to meet <laughs> yes just faces and oh, yeah. you know people coming and going but you know it's good to get to know other people too that have done other jobs and you learn uh, a lot from each other you know yes. how many p- people in the higher positions like say uh, mm-hmm. a, sh- a, a pit boss that doesn't know all the dealers names in the pit they know their they yeah. see the list of names to put them in their plate mm-hmm. their positions but don't really know their names i would go into pits and says what's that person's and name? they just say i'm just not good what's with names name? yes yeah. yes yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that is key yeah. miguel was very good at that miguel was uh 20 30 years ago my pit boss in atlantic city uh, and mm-hmm. I was a uh, box person, mm-hmm. floor person, box person and a floor person. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was smooth that way, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he just, he was very personable. And that's how he moved up. I know yeah. it because he's a very personable person. And that's when it goes, yeah, cool. he's technically sound as well, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he paid me to say this. But anyway, uh, what I'm saying <laughs> is, no, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but what I'm saying is he had a good disposition, um, didn't show emotion and being upset, you know, because when we came up in the business, young ladies, just to let you know, there was a lot of, <laughs> there was a lot of F bombs and stuff in the pits. You know, they weren't, uh, oh. human resources wasn't, weren't very prominent in our day. Talking like sailors. Talking yes. Like sailors. I know. Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you try. Well, yeah, you know, were, they, were, they sounded like drug drivers. Women talk like that when they spoke yeah. like that. Oh my gosh. Yes, wow. absolutely. Yeah. Just the dice mm. dealers and, and, yeah. and I, I thought I was Italian. Yeah, I thought it was a tape. Uh, who the, yeah. who the oh, I thought it was a tape. <laughs> yeah, I got your I got your break right here. Here's here's a break for you. You know what I mean? Well, Don't I don't talk about that. Who God. died and made you see? Yes. Yeah. You know? Oh wow. That's how we spoke. And you know, and, and no, I heard, I heard that. Nicknames for everybody. That. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had to strap myself in to make sure I don't have a relapse in doing these podcasts yeah. and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, hey, that's, yeah. that's fun though. A couple of yeah, times I had fun. to edit some stuff out that I said, you know, depends on who. Get like, into character. If, if we had like Harry Paisano on here and stuff, those guys and Joey mm-hmm. Bag of Donuts, we'd be right there with them, you know? But, oh, yeah. But, mm-hmm. yeah. But, but my point is, you know, that, that respect and that leadership mm-hmm. position and mm-hmm. that leadership mm-hmm. role, because times are changing. You know, yeah. drastically, they are. tremendously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when we speak about leadership and women and roles, like there's a, there's a quite a quite a nice list now. You know, there's Melanie Johnson at the uh, MGM, awesome. uh, Baltimore Harbor. There's uh, Jacqueline Grace, I think is her name, and she's at Tropicana. Mm-hmm. Stacy Gallo and uh, uh, Seminole Tampa, vice president of Table mm-hmm. Game. Charlene Ripley, she's at Riverwalk there in California. She was a uh, former oh boss gosh. of mine, but there's several, a lot of more women are being promoted yep, to I'm positions. I'm seeing more and more. And yeah. so, mm-hmm. Not that it's about time, but you know, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about time. It was I love it. It started, though. It, was in, uh, right. it started here in the islands. And one of the first things they told me is that we were all men. We were all men. Yeah. We can't get women in. And I was, I was young. I was in my, you know, I was like 18 years old. I said, and single. I said, well, wait a minute. Why don't you want women here? I want them as close right. to me as possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> they, were them out. they were keeping them out and then I figure it out. Yeah. Because today mm-hmm. you come here to the Dominican Republic and most of the women in the casino, most, most of the employees in the casino are women. Women, yeah. 
They They're didn't want up. them. Wow. Yeah. The when, when I went to Atlantic mm -hmm. City it, that I saw women in every yeah. position. We had women dealing with And it was good. Yeah. I, I felt good That's about awesome. that because yeah. many times, many times, they do a better job than guys mm -hmm. because they put in. They bring both. Oh, yeah. They have that that fire mm -hmm. within them that they that they know that, hey, listen, I'm, I'm a woman, so I got a one strike against me. And I want to go up. So they put mm -hmm. out 100%, 120%. You, you know, according to the American Gaming Association, 51% of the, of the staff in the, United, in the United States are women. Are, are women. Yeah. About yeah. 51% yeah. or more. Mm, interesting. And more and more of them are in, in, in the executive positions nowadays. And mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. I like, to yeah. see, I like to see that because it's good. It's good for everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's yeah, we're more. seeing that. Yeah. We're I'm seeing, seeing that. it more and more now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to see uh, Lydia, senior VP or general manager <laughs> and everything. Yes. <laughs> we'll we'll come, send, yeah. in, send us an application. I'm open. Yes, when we come, I out, know, come, right? out of, come out of retirement, remember. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll apply. We'll work for you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I Wait. love it. Oh, you guys want to work for me? If you're retired. Absolutely. You're out of retirement. How are you doing? Absolutely. It's all Absolutely. about that. It's about First of all, we got to talk money. Money's got to be Oh, no. money talks, right? Money talks. We're not cheap. We're not how, cheap. How, how are you doing? How are you doing? Good to meet you. Hi. 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 Uh, yeah, you're not cheap. <laughs> Have, but now, now. I'm, I'm, work, I'm, I'm paying for your experience now. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. But yes. you know how many. Uh, tribes have casinos now? How many nations are that have casinos? In the whole United States or yes. just like yes. in California? Yes. Yeah, you can Google real quick. I can, I should Google, I should have Googled that. I think I did oh, yeah. Google, Google that. that. Like, Google that for I think me. they were oh, like, my. it's a lot. I think just in California, it's a lot. I think I Googled there were like um, 574 tribes. I think most of them in, in, in the United States, sort of tribes. Problem. Most of the tribes in the U.S. have some sort of gambling, whether it's bingo or or, or full blown casinos, but they do have mm -hmm. something. And and what states do not? The sports. Mm -hmm. Many of them are looking into the sports. Uh, oh gosh, situation. that's next. Mm -hmm. Have you? Yeah, I know. Have Have you? Have you? Any of you? Uh, well, Lydia, especially, but uh, did, did you know that there there's a tribe that were per capita the rich, the wealthiest people in the world? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I know. I know. I did not. I did not. Did you know I don't that, know in the night in the nineteen oh. twenties, there was a tribe called mm -hmm. the Osage tribe, and oh, wow. and and because of what happened with the Osage tribe, they were mm -hmm. per capita wealthiest person um, people in the world, not tribe, I wealthiest not people in the world in nineteen twenties, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, basically what happened was. They were their land was stolen, obviously, as many mm -hmm. history goes, and and they were mm -hmm. uh, given the government now gave them land in Kansas. Mm -hmm. I believe it was in Kansas, wow. and that ter the territory that the Osage territory actually mm -hmm. was was over over the it was over the largest oil deposit in the world. And that's how they wow. became wealthy. That's how, wow. Yes. Uh, it wasn't because of the casino, it was the oil. No, no, yeah. no, no. This is 1920s oil. oil. Wow. And, and because of what took place and what happened, the mm -hmm. current Federal Bureau of Investigations was created because of them, because, yes. because people came in and was, were oh, stealing wow. and murdering mm -hmm. people in the tribe and stealing oh, the land God. and so forth. Uh, there's, oh, yeah. a, there's a great book by a guy named David Grand, Killers of the Flower Moon. Killers oh, okay. of the Flower Moon by David Grand. You have to read that book. book. I'm not going to tell much that. about it so other people can hear about it and you must read it. It's a great book right. to read um, mm -hmm. about the Osage tribe. Uh, I thought mm -hmm. it was fascinating. I mean, to know that they had mansions, the tribe, they had mansions, chauffeurs and butlers and oh. so forth. And there was so much 1920s. jealousy. There was so mm -hmm. much jealousy. Oh my gosh. And they, they had to investigate these crimes of being, being robbed and, and these murders mm -hmm. that the, F, the FBI was created for them. That's what it was, how oh, it was created. Crazy. Yeah. And what, are, what, are, what is the status of the tribe now? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I got to hmm. look it up. But uh, yeah, a lot I'm of them interested. were killed off. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. How sad. Yes, wow. it is. Yes, it is. Yep. Greed, money. 
Great. Money. They knew Great. They, that land was very, very, very. Yeah, I don't need a lot. <laughs> yes. I need some. Yes. <laughs> you were so happy that you were able to be with us today. And I hope this is the Thank beginning you. of a of a prominent relationship mm -hmm. uh, going going sure. further in the future. Um, awesome. uh, we make sure we stay in touch mm -hmm. all that we can. Um, it just, yep. uh, you know, this is a great place. I think is we have a platform to that to engage with people that we normally wouldn't have an opportunity to meet. Uh, and mm -hmm. so there's no greater opportunity. And the fact yep. also that hopefully there's some listeners that you're going to encourage to subscribe and to hear mm -hmm. your to hear this podcast, because once mm -hmm. again, as I said earlier, it's not that you can't always reach the amount of people that you want to reach. But if you just reach one, mm -hmm. that's that's valuable, yep. the, you mm -hmm. know, oh, yeah. it's priceless, you know. Thank you. So. Oh, yeah. And you got there's so many different people that you I know you guys had had on the show that has a wealth of information that we can all learn mm -hmm. from. So I, oh, I really love what you guys, are you guys just added to it. You guys just added to that wealth of information. Wow. Heck yeah. Well, thank oh, you yeah. guys for having us. I've been learning. You know, it was our pleasure. One hundred percent. I am so glad that you guys mm -hmm. said yes to doing this and I appreciate yeah. it. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Oh, you guys you, are Nina. welcome. So awesome. We appreciate it. Never hesitate to call us if you need anything from us. Yeah. No, I'm we'll calling you. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Bruce uh, Harris and Miguel Mora. Can, can uh -huh. we get the numbers after? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, you guys have, have lots of time now. Out. You're retired. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, those yeah, two. I appreciate that. that. We're yeah. always available, and, and we're loved Aww. to assist you. <laughs> I'm not, no joke. I'm going to go join Hino over there in Vegas or something. You said. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> anytime. Anytime. No, you don't want to go there. That heat, though. They're, they're finding too many bodies in that dried up lake now too many, every week. So you don't want to go there either. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Hina makes it look good. Hina, Hina, Hina makes it all look good. Yeah, I know, right? So I just, we just need to go to Hina's backyard. That's it. absolutely. That's well, we have at least two more Vegas trips this year, maybe three, huh? Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll be there. We'll be there. And we'll definitely be in touch with you guys. Perfect. All, All right. right. Guys, thank you so much again. I appreciate You're welcome. It. Thank you, guys. Alice. Aloha. Thank you. Thanks so right. much. Bye. Take care. And Ladies, nice to it's been a great. Thanks so much. We appreciate you so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you. It's been a great nice time. Bye. 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 That was amazing. Two wonderful ladies. Aren't yes. they amazing? Very nice to I, have them with I, us. I just love them. They are they're fabulous, they're kind, they're That's thoughtful, true. they're I can see why they enter the yes. they're just amazing yes. women. Very, um, very genuine, very honest. It's just yes. I think yes. chemistry wise, it just was a, a great great um meeting and engagement with some really cool people who have uh, realize and, and they work their way up through the industry, which yeah. is, which makes it great. It's a great dynamic and to understand uh, that the appreciation that they have for the industry, respect for the people that they work with and the organizations. That's what I really got out of that. You know, so it's really, really meant a lot. Well, another, another great podcast. Lydia and Casey on here. It, it's just been really wonderful, it, especially those two with their experience and their backgrounds and their love for the industry and their families. Yes. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for introducing us to them. Uh, you. I tell yes, you, that yes. was ph phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Okay. Well, you two have a fabulous Aloha Thursday. Okay. Did you um, see Miguel you, giving us the finger? He was fixing his glasses exactly. and he's giving us the finger over there. You see yeah, no, no. He's like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, you know, like nowadays they're, they're looking at all that at all that stuff the other day i saw something that they were saying that that was a uh a white supremacist uh signal somebody was like fixing their glasses or something oh look he's doing the white supremacist signal. <laughs> what the hell really we're being scrutinized now yeah. <laughs> yes thanks so wow. much We'll see you. Make sure you hit the likes, the like button, subscribe. Yeah. Right. Text play. Share. Casino yeah. podcast. Ready? Let's do it. Text play. Let's do it. Text play. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it.